We're here at CBS 2016, the Capacity Building Symposium in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr. Cosma Zavazava, who is Chief of Project and Knowledge Management Department of the International Telecommunication Union. Mr. Zavazava, thank you very much for being with us today. It is a pleasure to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about the CBS 2016. It's uh, all about capacity building, but, ha but it's a, a rebranded uh, version of a, 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 an event which has already been a very important in the ITU calendar. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about it. What you see today is born out of a very small meeting called the Capacity Building Meeting, uh, now rebranded to be Capacity Building Symposium because of its multi-stakeholder um, outlook in order to adapt and to keep uh, in sync with the fast moving ICT environment, particularly uh, technologies related to big data, internet of things, and other such related technologies. Over the years, technology has been evolving and moving at a very fast rate. And uh, it was imperative that we rebrand and come up with uh, this event, which focuses basically on technology and what technology can do for people. And uh, it also looks at the emerging uh, trends in the sector and outside. Because right now we are not just talking about the technology, but what the technology can do for people. So the ecosystem is for us a very important, ranging from health to education, from education to environmental protection, from that to disaster risk reduction, and many other issues. We are pleased to have rebranded this event and we are happy with uh, the response that we have got. And why Kenya as a location for this? Kenya is um, a special place. Uh, as you well know that uh, M-Pesa was born here and it has been globalized. Uh, innovation is a special place here and uh, many people know Kenya for entrepreneurship. So for us it is important to be here. They've got, they've become an ICT hub, if I may say that. And uh, when you look at our figures, they have been uh, performing very well and they are very active in the ITU Council. They are also active in many of our projects that we are implementing. So they are pretty much a market leader. And uh, a, at this event we are very pleased that uh, the regulatory authority and the ministry we have organized a special tour for the VIPs to go and see as the young people are showcasing uh, startups and uh, also re-emphasizing the point that uh, Kenya is a hub for ICTs. Uh, capacity building is particularly key with regards to the Sustainable Development Goals, the U United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I know that uh, ITU also awarded the, the President of Kenya recently uh, uh, for uh, their contribution for, to I ICTs uh, and, and sustainable development. Uh, perhaps we could also talk a little bit about uh, the, the emerging uh, technologies and, uh, and, and what's, what's happening at the moment. Absolutely. This is uh, another reason why we came to Kenya. The president was awarded by ITU in September 2015 with uh, an ICT Sustainable Development Award. And uh, that's very significant. It's not all that uh, get awarded. So it's a very special thing and he deserves it. Because when you are developing any particular sector, what you need is vision. But that vision, if it is not shared uh, countrywide, then it becomes just a dream. And uh, in this case, you can see on the ground that they are making tremendous uh, progress. And that is ranging f from public policy to the enabling environment, which is the regulator framework, and also to the private sector. Where they have a very vibrant uh, private sector. Now, in terms of emerging technologies, which they are also embracing, uh, we have big data as one of the big topics and its twin sister is Internet of Things. So Internet of Things is, uh, and others choose to call it Internet of Everything. So it is how machines communicate with, with each other. Others say it's machine to machine communication. And we are estimating that by 2020, there will be over 25 billion machines talking to each other without human intervention. And that is very critical because we need to monitor the environment as it changes. And as we monitor the environment, we'll be able to look after our environment and also to reduce the impact of natural disasters. Because 90% of natural disasters are weather related. And that is very important. Second, um, the weather pattern is changing. 
on climate change again. So food security is a big issue across the globe. That is important. New diseases are emerging. And as they emerge, they bring with them a huge challenge. Uh, the emergence of Ebola, for example. And ITU is in the forefront. We have just implemented uh, and launched a project which is benefiting West Africa on Ebola. It's a pioneering project. And uh, it's doing very well, covering uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. And uh, that is not the only, um, th those are not the only countries, because you can globalize it. So you can replicate it across the globe. We have a new threat of Zika, chikungunya, and dengue fever. All those and other emerging diseases, it is important. In education, because we are here to deal with the capacity building, uh, we have to make sure that a child in a rural community shall not be disadvantaged just simply because they are 10 kilometers away from a real school. Penetration level of mobile communications and mobile broadband is so good that we should be able to deliver uh, education anywhere, anytime, and on demand. So for us, that is very important. Ebola taught us a lot of lessons. We can help the health sector to deal with the emerging challenges using technology, even if they don't have a lot of people who will be dealing with that. So for us, that is very important. When you combine uh, big data, which is everywhere, but it's got to be analyzed, we have to anonymize it so that we protect individual privacy, but also to, to visualize it. And you combine it with machine-to-machine -machine communication, which is Internet of Things. And then you have a convergence with artificial intelligence. Everything becomes different. So it is important for us. But as we do that, we have to make sure that we build institutional as well as human capacity so that people can exploit it, but do it in a responsible manner. Finally, you gathered a, a number of key players here in capacity building. I just wanted to find out from you, what do you hope will be the outcomes from this particular event? We, we, we believe in a multi-stakeholder approach. So the first thing is to deal with the public because they influence public policy. And when public policy is there, then it is easy for us to formulate a legal framework. And uh, when we do that, the regulators within the provisions of the policy as well as the regulatory framework can now uh, operate or the legal framework they will be able to operate and operate effectively but the private sector also because they are a key player so everybody has got a role and what we want to achieve is to make sure that there is a, a natural and a seamless relationship uh, between or among all the players each one of them has got a role to play, even individuals themselves, and to take advantage of that. But nobody should be left out just simply because they don't understand the subject matter. And in the ICT sector, we have a huge challenge. One is that technology is moving every second. New tools of trade are being born. But the legal framework is very slow, and the regulatory framework. And so does the skill sets. And we have to make sure that we upgrade skills of people so that it, uh, we pretty much almost move in tandem with the emerging technology. So this is a very important uh, event, particularly in the post-MDG uh, uh, era. And now we have the Sustainable Development Goals. So we would like to make sure that we accompany countries on their journey uh, to 2030 uh, with technologies that are optimized in terms of use. Cosmos Zavazava, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.